Okay, Ashley, can I have a roll call, please? Kressel? Here. Platt? Here. Vedbrun? Here. Melby? Here. Jerdy? Here. Erickson? Here. Briggs? Here. Cavalier? Here. Okay, it's time for the open forum. Does anyone wish to address council on any issue not already on tonight's agenda? May come to the podium, state your first and last name and address, please. Anything from Chad? Uh, no, Your Honor, but full resident. Thank you. Hearing Agent logged off. <laughs> Hearing none, we'll move on. We have a presentation tonight. Uh, I hope I pronounce this right. Stephanie Okry. Yeah. Perfect. She's going to talk about child care at Washington School. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> well, my name is Stephanie Okry. I live in Shelley, Minnesota. Um, I have a current child care center in Grand Forks. I opened up in 2018, August 20th. Um, been there, we have 73 students, or children, I should say, not students. Um, I have my BS in elementary ed. Um, I have my master's and my PhD in early childhood and family science in both of them. Um, some people ask why I'm in early childhood child care center when I have so many, so much education is because for one, I love children. For two, I cannot teach college students. <laughs> Found that out. Um, so, and it came to me, one of my parents that drives from Crookston to Grand Forks, back to Crookston again for work, for childcare. And also my daughter rents one of the um, summer fields in Shelley. And the uh, manager there said that there's such a shortage here. Also, some people were bringing their kids to school or work with, excuse me, work with them. So, um, and then Carrie Olson, she was my licensure, and she's like, yes, Crookston is a huge shortage for child care centers. So, here I am. Um, I've been approached by Amy and a couple other people from um, the, the community, and I'm for whatever you guys need. Um, I do currently still have my child care in Grand Forks, but I will be splitting myself. Um, right now, too, I also have an assistant there, so when I'm not there, there is somebody there. I am working with the state already, but like we all know, state can be difficult. Um, our initial plan was to open on September 1st, right before school starts. Um, but my licensure is coming from Minneapolis, which doesn't make sense to me, but um, we need somebody closer. Uh, but she said it could take a few while or a, a little bit because the state is <coughs> backed up. So. Um, but all the paperwork, the fees, the background check, um, all that stuff's good to go. They said to in um, having it being in a school, then the <coughs> fire marshal and all those inspections and stuff should be quite quick. So hopefully it goes quicker than later. So that's us, <laughs> or me, I should say. So right. but any questions or? Anything. I'm here for the community. I'm here for families. I'm here for whatever Crookston needs because I'm hearing from a lot that we need a child care center here. So well, I think this is a great start. So mm -hmm. thank you. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Yep, and if there's anything like Amy has my information, um, the superintendent has my information. So, you know, anything that I can do for the community, I'm here to work with everybody. So to try to get the needs met we will be collaborating with the school like on lunches and stuff like that so we'll be also taking child care assistance I have put an application in for that so families have that to um, have in their back um, food program um, I've written a couple grants for equipment and all that good stuff so it's a role it's just Minneapolis is turned now to get it moving quicker so yeah. All right. Wonderful. That's me. Thank you. Yes. Your Honor, if, if I yes. could just um, add a couple things. Um, Stephanie was interested in coming to Crookston and has considered a few options um, as far as facilities, but expressed to us her interests were school, nursing home, and... Okay. Um, as priorities, they're a little bit easier to get licensing for. 
Um, and in a subsequent conversation with the superintendent, uh, we were kind of discussing available rooms. So they do have two rooms that I think, Stephanie, you're gonna be able to make into four spaces. Yep. So her focus will be on infant and toddler um, since there is a preschool already at Washington School. And as things progress, um, a lease will be arranged between Stephanie and the school district. And likely at some point, we may bring to you the city council um, possibly a proposal to help extend a sidewalk um, as, our, as our contribution from the separate entrance over to the parking lot, those types of things to help so parents aren't trudging through grass on the school district and Stephanie and us have talked a little bit about um, snow removal and how all that works out. So we are working through those details, but I'm really excited that um, Stephanie wants to be here in town and providing a service to our family. So thank you and thank you for coming to two meetings tonight. She was at school board <laughs> earlier, so thank you for coming. Um, and as Stephanie mentioned, I do have her contact information. If you ever have any questions or want more information, we can certainly facilitate that. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Amy. All right, moving on. Do I have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? So move, Your Honor. Thank you, Don. Is there a second by Clayton? Thank you. Discussion? Hearing none, can I have roll call, please? Kressel? Aye. Clad? Aye. Bed Bratton? Bed Bratton? Aye. Melby? Can you hear me? Aye. Yes. Jerdy? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Okay, this brings us to the consent agenda. Does anyone wish to remove anything from the consent agenda? Hearing none, can I have roll call, please? Whoops. We need a, I need a motion. <laughs> so moved. Thank you, Steve. Second. Second by Wayne. And a jump in the gun here. <laughs> now I'll ask for roll call. Cressel? Aye. Clatt? Aye. Bed Bratton? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jerdy? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Okay, no public hearings. This brings us to the regular agenda. Ashley. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I just wanted to relay the message that I have attached an updated resolution to approve the Rental Rehabilitation Loan Program Deferred Loan Repayment <coughs> Agreement and Mortgage. The revised agreement is omitting um, that um, of Noelle Nelson's, um, and instead the timeline was elapsed per her resolution. So if we could have a motion to approve that, the revised, I have the revised um, resolution, Your Honor. Okay, can I have a motion to approve the revised resolution? I make the motion, Your Honor. Thank you. Delane, is there a second? I'll second it, Your Honor. Thank you. Clayton, any discussion? Your Honor, I will just uh, make a real brief statement. This item 8.01 and I think there's three more that we'll see tonight are some cleanup items. Um, these were loans that um, the city made. The, satis the, the loans are satisfied either by the time elapsing or repayment and we need to file the mortgage satisfaction to release that lien on the property. So you'll see two, of, two other ones of those and then we'll later have a, a resolution to clean up a sale of property to ratify that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Cressel? Aye. Platt? Aye. Bed Bratton? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jerdy? Aye. Erickson? <coughs> Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Okay. Your Honor, 8.02 is a resolution to approve the Commercial Rehabilitation Loan Program Deferred Loan Repayment Agreement and Mortgage for Noelle Nelson. Motion to approve this resolution. So moved. Thank you, Joe. Second? Second, Your Honor. Second by Don. Thank you. Discussion? Roll call, please. Cressel? Aye. Flat? Aye. Bed Bratton? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jerdy? 
Aye. Erickson? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. 8.03 is a resolution to improve, in, approve the intermediary relending program IRP loan repayment agreement and mortgage with TJC Incorporated, Your Honor. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve this resolution? I'll make that motion, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Clayton. Second? I'll second, Your Honor. Thank you, Christy. Discussion? Roll call, please. Kressel? Aye. Platt? Aye. Bedbrotten? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jerdy? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Item 8.04 is a resolution to approve the school resource officer service agreement between the independent school district 593 and the city of Crookston, Your Honor. All right, can I have a motion to approve this resolution? So moved. moved. Who do I got here? Second. Right. Oh, and Joe. Steve. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Discussion. How long of a term is it? It's one year. Mm -hmm. in the resolution. It was in your packet here. If you read the resolution, it's in there. I thought it said it was longer than that. <clears throat> Your Honor, um, on the last page, page six of six of the agreement, it is through June 30th of 2024, beginning July 1 of this year. Okay, thank you. That's a cost share with the school. Um, this, this agreement allows us, and it, it's been reviewed by both the school district and city staff, um, allows us to provide a school resource officer at the school, which it does help both the school having that officer there for our students, as well as it keeps our patrol officers from having to come off of their regular routes, those types of things. And it does have, um, if you will notice on page, let me flip to it, um, four of six of the agreement, um, there are some estimated uh, reimbursements back to the city okay. yeah, for that. Thank you. Mayor, is there any... Is there any grants available for this anymore? Because there used to be at one time. Uh, Council member, I, I'm not aware of that. The cost would be borne by the school district on that, so I'm not sure if they have sought out grants. Um, Jeremy Olson is shaking his head no, so I'm not sure. Okay. And Chief Beermeyer is standing up in the back. When we first looked at this, we, we talked about um, When we first looked at this, we talked about grant for a COPS grant. We did not get that. Since the program is in place, we cannot apply for that grant now after the fact. So that's why we've just continued with the well both parties. I think it's a great arrangement. It's good to have a resource officer up to school, and I'm sure Jeremy appreciates it, and parents. So any further discussion? Roll we'll call, please. Kressel? Aye. Platt? Aye. Bedbrotten? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jerdy? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Your Honor, 8.05 is a, resolu a resolution authorizing and or ratifying the sale or dissolve of real property lot six, block four of Evergreen Estates subdivision. Motion to approve this resolution. So move, Your Honor. Thank you, Don. Is there a second? I'll second it. I'll second. Thank you, Clayton. Discussion. Your Honor, I will make a brief statement. This was one of the items I mentioned under our first regular agenda item. Um, this was property sold in 1998. Uh, we realized and it was discovered that some of the items were not recorded with the county. So this process we're doing today is just to ratify that sale and allow us to properly record documents. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Kressel? Aye. Platt? Aye. Bedbrotten? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jerdy? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. 
Your Honor, 8.06 <coughs> is a resolution calling a public hearing for the Wellhead Protection Plan. Motion to approve this resolution. So moved. I make that motion, Thank Your you, Honor. Thank you, Steve. Second by Delane. Discussion? Your Honor. <laughs> Brandon, if, if you need to jump in at any point to steer me in the right direction, but um, we have had a recent uh, public hearing on the Wellhead Protection Plan. We did receive some comments from the DNR after the date that we would like to address, and there was also a publication date error, and we just want to really make sure that we have that correct. Um, I think it's, is it Department of Health that is? Yes? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so for them, we need to be able to provide the documentation and the, um, the publication notice. This also allows us to address the DNR comments. So tonight, we're just asking you to set the time, date, and place of that public hearing. When would that public hearing be? Oh, three weeks. It is not in three weeks, is it the next one? One so, moment, Your Honor. No, no I problem. will just look right at that on the resolution for you. It's on here. Yes. I don't. It uh, is. It is July 26th, Your Honor. Thank you, Ashley. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ashley. Yes. <clears throat> Should have read a little deeper. <laughs> Any further discussion? Motion. Roll call, please. Cresso? Aye. Black? Aye. Bed Broughton? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jerdy? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. <clears throat> Your Honor, 8.07 is Crookston Housing and Economic Development Authority, CHEDA, board members to address the city council regarding amendment to enabling resolution. A reminder, up to 30 minutes is allotted for this agenda item. I'll make that motion, Your Honor. Thank you, Don. Second? Oh, this isn't a resolution. This isn't a resolution. It's not? No. This isn't. So no. we don't need a first We don't need a first or second. second. So I guess it's open to uh, any Cheetah Board members that would like to speak. Kurt Halstab, <clears throat> president of Cheetah. Cheetah has heard clearly the complaints of the council and citizens and take them seriously. Since last Tuesday, I've been unable to set a date for a Cheetah meeting to do a due diligence on formulating options with Cheetah board approval. At this time, I would request additional time to set such a meeting. I see no reason to rush this process. Okay, moving on. Your Honor, 8.08 .08 is a resolution calling a public hearing on the questions of modifying the enabling resolutions concerning the Crookston Housing and Economic Development Authority. I'll make that. Motion to approve this resolution. Your Honor, I make that motion. I'll second it. Uh, Delane and Don, thank you. Mm -hmm. Discussion. <clears throat> Your Honor. Hey, we got all of, our, all of our stuff in order on this here. You know, we got if, if we do this here whole deal, if, you know, at the public hearing, I heard many times to slow down, do this right, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, if we got to hire a new economic development person, if we've got to hire a housing authority person, what's all this going to cost us and what's it going to do? I, I think we've got to start getting our stuff in order before we to hear from your public or from you or uh, Cheetah staff or board member. Um, and we discussed, I think, the timeline last time. If this item is not addressed this evening or approved this evening and was on the next meeting, the earliest you would be able to hold a public hearing would be on um, July 26th. Just to understand that timeline, this particular resolution in front of you um, calls for a date of July 12th, for the so, July 12th meeting. 
Mr. Hillstead, I've just asked for more time. Is that something that we need to discuss a little more as far as will that be during the public forum uh, portion of this or do we need to um, talk about that a little bit? I'm more? not sure I fully understood. I had um, spoken to Mr. Hellstab this morning and that's not quite what we spoke about. If more time is needed, I would need a little bit. I don't know if more time is needed for the cheetah board. Um, that's what he was saying, right? Right, Kurt? Yes. <clears throat> So I, and I, I appreciate that, Kurt, and I was hoping when you guys held your special meeting about two, two, three weeks ago now, I was hoping something would come from that meeting that you guys could bring to the board that might make some sense and saying, you know, this is, okay, we hear what everybody's saying. There, maybe there needs to be some changes is what we're proposing, but you guys went down a list and you posed everything that we're doing. So yeah. now I'm just wondering, you, at that meeting was a miss, maybe a missed opportunity for you guys to maybe say, okay, let's, let's start here. So am I, am I missing that or? Council's ultimatums came after that meeting. So, you know, you know, so you can okay. Well, there is I, I hear you. Cheetah, but Cheetah would welcome the opportunity to address any of council's concerns about Cheetah. Is that an option? I believe it is. But after we pass the resolution, we come to the meeting where you had four options. Do you remember what the first option was? You don't remember what the first option is. What, what's the first option of our, of our options? Of your options. Like yes. Question. Okay. That no longer, I believe, I'm just stating my opinion now, is no longer a thought process for an option. So, our resolution stopped that. That's what we as the board said, we got to put a stop to that. Option, visit with us. That hasn't occurred. So now, after hearing what's going on in the community, I gotta get my board together and say, they now have options, can I meet? And I gotta make sure I have a quorum of my board members, have some options available, how we think Cheetah can move forward, get it approved by my board, and then I can bring it here to visit with the council. I haven't had time to do that. So I, I appreciate um, what you're saying, but, um, <clears throat> You know, this isn't the first time that we've been down this road. I mean, so I mean, after the first time that we had it, I mean, would, would that have probably possible, was that a missed opportunity back when we lost the, the previous city administrator and then when we, you know, lost the mayor during those situations, was that maybe an opportunity to say, okay, hey, if something's not working, city has tried this, we haven't tried anything yet to this point. 
was that maybe an opportunity that you could have said, Let, let's, we gotta figure something else out? You're saying because you lost the city administrator and the second one? Was, they, they, were, they, were, they were struggling with working with Cheetah. Say that again? They were struggling with working with Cheetah. Your hindsight's 100% okay. possible. Thanks. Thanks. That's my, my personal response, okay? Talking for myself. <clears throat> you have a plan here next week to try to get the board together, correct? Somebody was talking, I didn't. So do you have a plan to get the board together next week? I've made for calls, I've got it down to about one date. Time frame is still debatable. Most of my board has responded. Yeah, all but one. I haven't got a hold of that person yet. Well, I guess too, you know, a year ago and I had a joint council cheetah meeting. So, you know, we, I think mm -hmm. council was trying and willing to work with the cheetah board and we heard nothing from your board. You I mean, well, you, your comment is, is that sit down and, and try to work out our differences. Didn't we try to do that a year ago? Are you speaking about the one on the Correct. The high school? <clears throat> We didn't know what to expect, Dale. No agenda. I asked you to sit down and do an agenda with me. Before the meeting? Before the meeting. Then I will, I, will, I will refute that. I do not remember you calling me about an agenda. It was after a cheetah meeting. I asked you to make up an agenda. I never saw it. I said, let's do, let's do a co-agenda. And did you ever call me to meet did on you, it? And you said you would get in touch with me, and you never did. I'm sorry. I don't believe I said that. Your Honor, we have a first and a second on this. Okay, any further discussion? Roll so call, please. So what are we gonna do what though? Is this something that we're gonna- All we're asking this for is, is a public hearing. Just the vote, um, the vote comes next on the resolution and it will either be voted up or down to call the public hearing. Okay. Roll call, please. Russell? Aye. Platt? Aye. Bed Bratton? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jerdy? Aye. Erickson? Nay. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Motion carries. Your okay, Honor. moving on. I, item 8.09 is a resolution to approve the Minnesota Department of Transportation, MnDOT, Corridor Study Consultant Selection. I have a motion to approve this resolution. I'll make that motion, Your Honor. Thank you, Clayton. I'll second. Second by Christy. Discussion. I think we need you a little know, information from. Yes. Uh, you know, Pat at one of the meetings said that we could take the blocks out and cement the centers and call it maintenance. <sighs> you know, I haven't really ever heard anybody to say that they want two lanes, a bike path, and all that stuff. They feel leave them where they are, but we've always heard that we couldn't do anything with the sidewalks because they wouldn't be ADA accessible. Council member, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, this, this study would develop the alternatives, I believe three alternatives, for the uh, city council to have final approval on. The study is just to determine and work through what those recommendations uh, for alternatives will be. And this today right. is... But that six, it says 60 some thousand dollars to do this study. Why don't we take that 60 some thousand dollars and replace that sidewalk? Uh, Put it toward replacing the sidewalk. Council member Van Bratton, the council has already um, agreed to enter into a joint powers agreement with MnDOT. Um, and what we're discussing tonight is that consultant selection and what the city share would be. Um, we had previously discussed 50,000 and I will, I will explain this a little bit um, more in depth when we get to the presentation part. Well, that's what I mean, it was for 50,000 and now it's more. So that's where I guess my fault that uh, 
I think we should just let MnDOT do what they want to do to their, their portion of it and fix our sidewalks. Okay. Um, without, correct me if I'm wrong, but without a corridor study, MnDOT is not going to come in and fix sidewalks. Or basically, if MnDOT was going to do nothing, all they were going to do is ch change the traffic signal signs downtown. Yep. That was it. And, uh, Your Honor, this, um, and I'll, I'll ask Chad here in a moment if he would put the map up. Um, it might, I know it's been a little while since we've talked about it, but um, council did approve. It's a little bit hard to see, but um, the blue, the blue blocks, I believe there's about six to six and a half blocks that are considered local blocks. That's where our share comes in. The yellow is the MnDOT corridor study. Um, so this part actually has been approved to move forward by council. We are just discussing tonight the um, consultant selection, and I do have a few things I, I'm going to need to present to you so you have a good understanding before you make your um, decision. Thank can you. I, can I also just confirm that there is a rather sizable dollar amount that the ADA is giving us in order to improve the sidewalks? Yes. And with and, all this quarter study, that's gone. Right. The, the study must be done um, in order to develop the alternatives. The decisions that were um, before you prior were if you wanted to, in fact, include the local city blocks, and the vote was yes on that, and then if we were committing to entering into a joint powers agreement with MnDOT, their initial um, contribution was going to be $100,000, and I, I will be getting to that in a minute, but I don't want to get, get ahead. Um, Chad, is Matt Upgren on... Do you know yet? Uh, yes. I'm here. Okay. I don't know if you can hear me or we not. We can. Matt, I'm just going to go through the um, some of the bid details, and then if you need to jump in at any point or for questions, Matt Upgren is available um, with us tonight by Zoom. Um, what I want to start with, if I may, is we did receive three bids for the corridor study consultant selection. Two of those bids actually came in above what our estimated cost would be. So if you'll remember, um, based on MnDOT's estimation of their yellow blocks, if you will, um, being around 100,000, we estimated ours would be about 50. One of the bids came in less than that. MnDOT also encouraged the city, and we uh, support this approach, is to strongly consider um, experience, experience with corridor studies. We have a unique situation, and there's certain elements of our corridor study that are, <coughs> we, we want to make sure we have that expertise and that strong background to really address those vital components of our corridor study. We have sidewalks, we have traffic, we have lighting. Um, we are recommending to you um, SRF, as the consultant. So their bid um, did come in at 203,970.45. That is high. Um, that's higher than we expected. So based on our initial estimation, that would have left the city with 103, right? Based on their experience and their proposal, they have a strong background in corridor studies. They've worked with MnDOT. They also provided the most robust project team um, in their proposal of about 15 people, and it included things like a signal and lighting um, specialist. And that is going to be important and a vital aspect of our corridor study. They have um, safety. They have, I've got the bids here in front of me, but based on the city's review, we consulted with our city engineer, and we also consulted with MnDOT staff. MnDOT was able to go back and get authorization to actually cover two-thirds of that bid. So that is up. Um, our share becomes approximately 68,000. So the remainder of that actually would be covered by MnDOT. So we do understand this is above um, what we initially discussed. We do believe that this is the best consultant to select based on experience. And with MnDOT's authorization for additional contribution, it makes this a more feasible option for us to consider. So it's like eighteen thousand dollars over what we, we yeah. thought it was. That's be. right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But we're getting more bang for a buck with this particular. That's true. I, I believe after um, their after reviewing the proposals, this team that's proposed would really provide more support. And if you'll remember, part of the um, scope 
is a community review panel. So this, any consultant selected will be expected to also join those community review panel teams. We've started some initial discussions on how we're gonna begin developing that. Um, this has a, they have a really large team to help support these efforts that we feel like would give us the most successful approach to this project and the very best alternatives to be developed for your consideration um, for our unique corridor study and some of the aspects that we think are gonna be really important through that. With, with this study, the, well, the, I know one time they were talked about, you know, putting cones up or putting markers up or whatever so that people could see how it's gonna be. Would that include that too? Um, we. This is Matt Upgren here, uh, project manager with MnDOT. Um, if I may jump in. Um, so the, the corridor study itself doesn't um, specifically, or the, the scope of work doesn't specifically direct um, the city or the consultant or MnDOT to erect those, the um, cones you're, you're speaking about. Uh, um, we call them a demonstration project, but that's certainly an option on the table if through the um, process of um, working with the community review panel, developing the alternatives. If the desire by the city is to have a demonstration project done, um, that's on the table. They do cost money. Um, I, I think Minda, we typically cover that, but something we could discuss. And I, I've, at this time, it, it's premature to decide where we would do it and how and on what block it. We need to get into the study to, to figure that out. and. Um, but that's certainly an option on the table. Yeah, we, we discussed that with you guys um, at a prior council meeting, so. Right. That's, that's why I brought it up, because I know we yep. talked about it. Yep, we mentioned that, and we, we've, I think we're doing a couple in other communities right now, but um, yeah, certainly an option on the table, so. Okay, thank you. So just to confirm, so basically with this study, we're gonna have three alternatives to kind of see what we think would best fit for the city, correct? Yes. In that process of making those decisions, we'll get a lot of public input yes. and have very specific constituent groups that come through and, 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 and work with that, those particular individuals to create those three opportunities or options for us to cite ultimately, is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Yep. And that's, we talked about like a trial run for so many months with MnDOT back before they said they could do something for a little while. Is that correct, Matt, when we well, talked about well, that? Well, yeah, I think that's kind of getting back to Tom's question about the demonstration okay. project. Um, same thing there, so. But I think wasn't that kind of brought up before we decided to go with a, a MnDOT corridor study? That was. Yeah. I think that was, was before asking. my time. I don't, I don't yeah, remember that conversation. I, it was brought up to do up. some kind of trial. I believe it was they're talking even this summer yet. And but I, I, I think we're putting the cart before the horse here. I think we get to the, the corridor study and let them do their homework. We do our homework on this and see what the best route to go with this. And then when that, when what you're saying is then when that comes about that the one they choose, we do a trial on that to see if that works or what is? I, I, don't I think know that would game plan. Yeah, I think that would be part of the discussions and the development. Um, Matt, you can chime in if I'm incorrect about that, but I think that would be one of the discussions we would then have with with MnDOT and the and the consultant. I, I yeah, I mean, it, oh. it, it's how can you fully replicate? Depending on what the alternative is, I think through a demonstration project, we could try to replicate that scenario in an isolated location, right? So not the entire way through town. So um, I guess we're telling you that we would make um, the demonstration projects on the table. Uh, I, yeah, I guess I'm not privy to conversations before this fall. If the, I, I think there were other staff working with you guys um, a couple years ago, but um, I guess I will just add that we think uh, SRF is a very strong candidate, um, not to speak ill of any of the candidates that submitted um, uh, for your RFP, but SRF is a strong candidate, we can say that. And and we would um, wholeheartedly support um, going with that, that deepest resume. Um, we've uh, made a commitment to raise our, um, or cover our two thirds, that higher amount. We think it's that important. Um, I know it's it's easy to spend other people's money when it's not yours, right? But it, it is important that we get this right in the community. Um, 
because the alternatives that are developed in this report, should the council vote to proceed with the preferred alternative, um, that's going to have a lasting impact. That's a document that MnDOT will go to and, and look to in our scoping process for future work in Crookston. And um, it's important we get it right and with a candidate that has a, a deep traffic understanding. Um, so it's more than just sidewalks, right? It's operation of the signals and and timing and um, the whole the geometric layout of the whole corridor. So. I will say um, I've had a couple of constituents in, in the past couple of weeks talk to me about really the importance of the safety of our downtown. Um, I, I think that, you know, having that, that citizen input is going to be so important. I think that what um, I've been seeing um, is on mom pages where kids have been darting out into the middle of Highway 2 and like people like literally almost went into a car. And I think that this is so important for us to have the best possible options and really look at that as we go forward. And I hope that we can find an alternative that satisfies the needs of this community. But I think that that's one aspect of it. I think I've also heard from some of our older citizens who've been very concerned about parking in the downtown and being in the downtown, especially in the wintertime, um, when they're trying to be in a... Um, um, a par parallel parking spot and possibly slipping on ice and you're right out into the street. And so um, I think this is going to be a welcome opportunity for a lot of our citizens going forward. And I'm excited to see what we have to okay, offer. Sure. Matt, did you, did you see that the uh, SRF has the best RFP for this project? No? Um, I've, I personally have not looked through them. I'm um, speaking from the information provided by Amy, but um, Amy did a good job summarizing kind of those um, candidates. This would be an agreement between yourself, the city and SRF. So that it, it's your consultant, it's not MnDOT's, right? But um, we have an agreement with you guys or, or will have one when the joint powers agreement is complete. Um, so it's, it's ultimately the city's decision um, and they will be directly reporting to you for invoicing, things like that. Um, but all three of our entities are going to be working together to make the corridor study happen. So, thank you. As part of the yep. study, did, did Amy, did we uh, discuss uh, whether it's going to be them or you or your team to look into Faust and Bagley, um, where they've already been into that uh, corridor, where they've redone the cities there? Do you mean MnDOT I mean, or the consultant? I can't remember if consultant. we discussed, I just kind of want to get on the record so we can make sure we look into that because I know Faustin had a big issue, or it was Bagley had a big issue with it. Um, Faustin went okay. He could probably relate to how, how they went down the corridor here, but I know I'd like to get their input from these other cities too. I just let get a note on that, but because there was some problems in some towns and some towns it worked out well, but I just kind of think that would be a, a good place to make sure we get that, whether it's in the study or we do it ourselves or however that works. But. Steve, can I ask, do you know if um, it was with the person that was doing the study, if it was the person that they created the, that actually was doing the work, was it just the input from I the city? I think the citizens and the, the council, I think he can probably, uh, thank yeah. you. Matt, do you have more Matt, information on? Probably, because I think he's the one that brought that up, I believe. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I think I understand the question, maybe not. I, or you're just at, you just want to get um, sort of a, kind of the anecdotal feedback from the community of Faustin and Bagley, right, based on how their experience went. I, I will say I, um, I personally worked in Faustin. Um, their council did vote to approve um, a restripe of their community. Um, and so they, they, they uh, adopted the preferred alternative of the outcome of their corridor study um, they adopted that and we're proceeding in that direction in Faustin. Now in, in Bagley, um, they elected, their council elected not to adopt the preferred alternative and it ended right there. So as of today, Bagley is a four lane and that's the way it's going to stay, um, on, you know, for the foreseeable future, right? Until another major pavement project comes through, you know, you could have a discussion again, but, um, for 20 plus years anyways, um, and that's the other point that I want to reinforce. I know, Amy, you mentioned it again tonight, but um, this corridor study is not you guys agreeing to any changes to Crookston. Um, you know, you, the council will have that, that final say. Um, when the report is complete, the consultant will prepare that preferred alternative out of the three, the one that they feel 
um, with the feedback of the community review panel and working hand in hand with them and the city leaders, um, what that preferred alternative will be. And then at that point, um, you guys will have an, an opportunity to uh, vote to adopt that or not. Um, legally, MnDOT cannot change um, access. We can't increase it or decrease it in a city without the city's permission and, and uh, approval. So um, there's that's monumented in state statute. So we, we can't make any changes, even if we wanted to, to Crookston, um, if it were to add a lane or reduce a lane uh, without the city's permission. So uh, it, we, we don't want to operate that anyway that way anyways, you know, uh, operating alone or separate from the city. That's why we want to, that's why we're pushing for this study. Um, it's an opportunity for everyone to really get their thoughts out on the table. Um, it's, it'll be about a year long process. Um, we need the city's permission anyways. So if, if we were to make any changes, it has to come from you and it has to be driven by the city. If the city doesn't want it, we're not going to do it. Just like what happened in Bagley. Um, it was voted down and that was the end of it. Um, yeah. But we do encourage back as I kind of got off topic there back to the question, uh, we, we highly encourage you to speak with the other communities and um, we, we think that that's due diligence that should happen and um, hear from them how their how did their experience go I mean I, if you ask me I'm going to say we, we did our doggone best in Faustin you know to hear to make sure everybody was heard but um, I, I may have a biased opinion being I work for the state and I, <laughs> I was involved. So I encourage you to on your own speak with them and, and hear from them. I, I trust you'll hear uh, overall positive uh, remarks from, from Foss and I really think so. Um, at the end of the day, it's, you're never going to please everybody, right? Um, there are folks that, um, that don't want changes. There are folks that do want changes. And the goal of that study is to bring all those voices together into one location and, uh, um, kick it around the table and, and uh, come up with a decision that's ultimately best for the community. And like I've said before, I mean, that's, that's where we rely on you, the elected leaders, that you, you're going to have a big decision to make. It, it's, a, it's a tough decision, you know, uh, the potential for a big change. I don't know. We'll see what the preferred alternative is, but that's where the, low, uh, the constituents are relying on you, the folks they've elected to, to make that decision. So. Your Honor. Yes. If I may, I just, I just want to circle back. So the, the decision that um, we're asking of you this evening is to select the mm -hmm. consultant, um, which is the starting point of developing and conducting that study. Um, as a reminder, um, this, the bid did come in higher than what we expected. MnDOT has increased their contribution um, to cover two-thirds, mm -hmm. um, leaving us with approximately 68000 in city share. We'd initially discussed... Um, utilizing the uh, general fund reserves to pay for the 50,000 that we estimated, the general fund reserves can easily support uh, the 68,000. It's important to me and to us as a city and hopefully to you as council members, we gotta do this right the first time and I think a careful selection of a consultant that can give us the very best alternatives to consider if one of those is, a, is an alternative that you would wish to vote forward is really critical to this process. Thank you, Amy. Any, can you any say further discussion? Tom. I say, Amy, you said this is all coming out of the general fund then? Council Member Van Broughton, that is what we discussed initially, that the, that our share would come from general fund reserves. And I do, um, I feel very comfortable that general fund reserves can also support this $68,000 share. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Kressel? Aye. Platt? Aye. Bed Broughton? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jurdy? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Right, motion carries. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay, moving on, reports <clears throat> and staff. Amy. Thank you everyone for hanging in um, through that meeting. We got a lot of work done tonight, a lot of cleanup work. I'm also really excited that we got to introduce Stephanie to the community both at the school board meeting um, and here tonight in front of you. I think, um, I think Crookston should feel really blessed that um, she wants to bring her experience here. She's been a really cooperative and engaging partner in, in discussing 
some of those terms with the school district and wants to offer the very best um, care for children, focusing on infant and toddlers at the most reasonable rate possible. Um, she will be offering, I think, as she said, the food program. So I think that's really exciting. And um, with the school's cooperation and the school board and Jeremy, um, able to get that started as close to school starting as the licensure will allow. Yes, sir. Did she say how the numbers of kids? I guess or did I miss it? Oh gosh, she Jeremy, did. did. She say it. At she school? reported at school board. Okay. 22. Yep. So she'll be able to split. Um, there's two classrooms available. She'll be able to split each one into two sections. Um, I don't remember she announced it here, but she does in her infant room, kind of a non-mobile infant, and then she has a section for the mobile infants. Is there um has there been a um a study on what the what the total need of child care is? There a number out there for the total needs for this community? I think we could work through um, Tri Valley. Probably are over there our partners and get that information. Um, what we do know is the waiting lists that exist right now are infant and toddler. And so that's what we really asked her to focus on if she was willing to come and do that so we could start alleviating some of that need in that area with the hope of future growth um, as the school makes future decisions and does some long-term planning that if more space becomes available, Stephanie is willing to grow into that space and be able to expand those, those services that she offers. I think it's pretty great um, being a mom who had an infant here, um, you know, gosh, five years ago now, but it's still an issue, um, driving to Fisher every day for, um, for six months. And then um, just by, I think, the grace of God, to be honest, <laughs> that we were able to get into somewhere in Kirkston, um, you know, I think it allows a lot more mothers to be in the workforce. Um, and I think we all know that there is quite the labor shortage as it is. And so this is exciting to, um, to pro provide this, and I hope to see more. Your Honor, that was all I had. Thank you, Amy. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, start with Chief Biermeyer. <laughs> Your Honor, just to uh, briefly let you know that the hearing process continues. Um, uh, technically, with uh, Officer Rascott, um, uh, the school is attending the Fremont Patrol Division. Technically, a full staff right now with regard to patrol. Um, as they are across the state, all departments. We extended the Another three weeks. We're moving forward with the applications we have right now with them <coughs> and, and doing some preliminary background and some testing. Um, so we're hoping for the best with uh, some quality. Thank you. Scott. No report today, Your Honor. Brandon. Welcome. Greg. <laughs> no report tonight, Nope. Dad. Uh, no report, Your Honor. Brian here. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody from the fire hall? Okay, this will go all around the table. Start with Christy tonight. Um, we have a couple <laughs> things going on. Sorry, I'm reading. I'm reading my notes, so I apologize. <laughs> um, uh, I was trying to figure out who it was that did the wellness walk, but we have some really great um, maps now to do little mini walks for those who are in the downtown. Um, and that was something that was supported by uh, Polk County Wellness, the DCDP, and SHIP. And so you can, there's maps to do 15, 30, and 45 minute walks. And so um, I think there's a couple other council members and, and, and Amy was there and it was really great to see that opportunity um, and for the people to be getting out in the downtown and, and walking around. So that was really exciting. Um, uh, at the last park meeting, we uh, had a nomination for the, I believe it's the media booth at the Crookston Sports Center. The Sorry. press box, I believe. Uh, yeah, press, press box. box. Um, that was brought forth by, I believe, Jake Fee and um, Scott, Clevin. Scott Clevins. And so that is passed as an, and is in process now. Um, other than that, I think that's pretty much all I have. Um, I know that we're in the process of hiring a new um, park and recs individual, and that's been posted. 
Yes, ma'am, that has been posted. Um, we are leaving that open for first review um, through July 8th. We were unsure the level or amount of applications we've got. We have got quite a few in. Um, I have not yet sat down. I kind of want to get to sit down and look at them all at once. Um, Tina's managing um, those coming in through Indeed. There's been a lot through Indeed. We have a lot dropped off in paper surveys. So um, I've communicated with the park board, but as we get nearer to a selection um, process, we're going to have on the interview panel, we will have park board rep representation and we'll be reaching out as we get a little bit closer to that um, to start narrowing these those down and hopefully we will have an applicant we want to bring forward to you for a recommendation all right thank you anything else Christy that is it thank you Steve anything um, created today is July 15th uh, I don't see anybody from the chamber here but they didn't get a director's on lake so that's a positive thing uh, uh, so but yeah it's crazy days it's, uh, their board put it together and it's gonna happen on July 15th so support downtown Crookston Right, thank you. Clayton. Nothing to report, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Tom, anything? Nope, nothing to report, Your Honor. All right. Don. Oh, I want to thank the Chief of Police, Bermeyer, for taking care of some problems that we had up in our ward. So thank you very much for doing that. Quick, quick uh, response <laughs> by your officers, and appreciate it. Let's reduce the credits. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Tell them then, please. Joe? Yeah, I just want to let everybody know that uh, the North End welcome sign is now up. It looks nice. very well. Um, they are going to do landscaping next and work on the South End, but drove by it today after work, and it looks beautiful. So it's a, it's a great great deal for Kirkson coming into town. Everybody can see it. And so if you get a chance, drive by it and look at it. Joe, I will say it is wonderful, so please thank everybody for... Yeah, I, I was surprised how well it looked today. You know, I, I've been looking at the backdrop for since last week, and I didn't, wasn't really realizing it. And I drive by there every day, so I kind of forget to even peek over there. But today I drove by after work. I'm like, oh, wow, that looks nice. So yeah, it great catches job. your eye for sure. Yeah. 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 yeah it looks nice. I've seen a picture of it. Um, yeah. Jess showed it to me at the school board meeting. It looks really, really nice. Yeah. Very modern and inviting and cool. And but, not too, but not too much. It draws your eye, but it's just... Classy. Yep, yeah. gets in, yep. Yeah. I want to drive by in person and see <laughs> That's all, Your Honor. Thank you. Delane, anything? Uh, nothing tonight, Your Honor. Thank you. Wayne? Remember, it's dry out there. Careful with those fireworks. They're, they're, they're <coughs> illegal. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Mr. Mayor, you can buy them at Walmart. There are certain ones that are legal. Just to let you know. They can't go boom in the air, though. I didn't say they had to. Them sparklers. <laughs> I mean, they'll still, like, the sparklers and all that stuff. <laughs> all right. Got you. Thank you. Um, I, I gave a, kind of a hats off to Scott at Park Board, but I want to give him a hats off here to the frolf people that go down and do the frolf thing. They are excited that the baskets are back up in Central Park. Seems like they got a good uh, league going, about 16. So they're kind of rotating between Castle and Central Park, and so they're excited. Thank you, Scott. Um, also, I'd like to thank uh, especially Jeremy and Stephanie and Amy for putting this together with uh, the, the daycare issue. Great work. Thank you very much. And that's all I got. Uh, there's no ways and means tonight. Nothing else to come before council. We are adjourned. Thank you.